And we're back, and continuing with more DeCapo 2. So, let's see what's next. I woke up pretty well. I sat up and then crawled back into the bed again. Her. I turned on the heater with a remote control. I heard warm air blow out from the heater unit. I guess I'll stay in bed until the room warms up. Still, I felt like I had a nostalgic dream. I don't remember too much, but I still feel warm inside. Hmm. A dream. I usually don't like having dreams. Because of that. I have a special ability that nobody else has. Although it isn't anything useful. In fact, I wish I didn't have such, a, such an ability. As I thought to myself, the room grew... The room grew pretty warm. Okay, let's get up. I got out of the bed. And back to school. Ultane asked me if she locked the front door. Ultane locked the Yoshino uh, house's front door pretty often. It seemed rather strange, but it happened all the time. Ah! My lunch. No, not usually, but I want to take my lunch today. She said with a sigh. Yes, there is. Anything's possible, as long as you don't give up. She showed me her watch. You can do it, Otone. Sure, because you're a very good cook. Your homemade lunch will give me something to look forward to, and I'll be able to concentrate on my study. Listen, I'll concentrate at least three times more than usual. Rattle, rattle. Why are you unlocking the door? Her sleeves were already up, and she was ready to do it. But there isn't enough time, though. No way, that's impossible. Look at the time. I showed her my phone. Wait, our positions were switched. Altune looked at my phone wistfully. Break it up, says Yume. Yume reservedly spoke to us from just up ahead. We're coming. I walked quickly and caught up to her. Altune caught up too. The three of us were side by side. Shall we go? The three of us were walking down the street to school, as usual. No, I can't. I'm a man who lives by following his inspirations. My mood at the time determines such things. So do you. I couldn't say anything because she was telling the truth. By the way, how could she get good grades when she's always wasting her time lazily, lazily at home? She smiled provokingly. Fool, don't underestimate me, okay? I just didn't study, that's all. I usually pretend to be studying during the exam period, but I actually play RPGs that I beat ages ago. Also, I read a com uh, I read, I guess. I read a complete set of my favorite manga. If I studied earnestly, I would be getting the best grades in the academy. <laughs> Shit. I forgot Otone was here. Ah, uh, well, I mean... She came closer to me. No, I didn't mean to deceive you, really. Her face was smiling, but her eyes weren't. Altonay's right hand on my shoulder terrified me greatly. Yes, I'll be glad to. That was all I could say. Baka. Yume muttered wearily next to me. 
おはよう乙女にゆめちゃんついでに弟くん An extremely energetic voice came from behind us. Ah, Mayuki! Ohayo! Ohayo gozaimas, Kosaka senpai. Mayuki senpai joined us after wishing us a good morning. Ototoku sa, Suginami no yote shiteru? Kuripa no. Sorry, but I'm not interested in that. Nanda, Suginami to so so I know Ototoku na lovers. Yatsu no schedule or sighted a cana to mota da kero na. Well, we did enjoy our sweet alone time, quote unquote, with him、uh, during lunch yesterday when we found a robot. She didn't look too disappointed. I wish she wouldn't say that Suginami and I were lovers. If possible, I'd rather not have anything to do with him. Mayuki was already Suginami Kun or Mark Sumo? Motira, Kondo Kosoyatsu no Iki no Tomete Arundakara. She smiled boldly. I don't think she should go、uh, so far as to destroy him, though. そういう乙女は弟くんを徹底マークだよねうーんでも生徒会の仕事もあるからなでも誰かが弟くんを徹底マークしないとまた何やらかすかわかんないよ I won't do anything そうなんだよね<笑>やっぱり私が見るしかないかなしょうがないな As Otone spoke, she looked happy Hey, that hurts, Yume. I turned around and looked at Yume, who had been bumping into me with her bag. For some reason, Yume looked away unhappily. Gee, what could it be? This part is fantastic. I love this part. <laughs> Take a look at the name Garrison Sensei, and you'll see that it is a complete. It's, it's a character that is clearly alluding to South Park、um, <laughs> as time goes on. Thank you, that was very well done. But your sentence structure was worse than an elementary school student's, and it was completely off topic, so you get a C minus on this assignment. Garrison Sensei's class is so tough. We were reading our homework assignments on global warming and its impact upon the Earth. Of course, I didn't do mine. I can only pray Sensei doesn't pick me. I hate to tell you this, but they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Wataru wasn't thinking that deeply. His report turned into a food review at the end. Oh, Wataru. You might have gotten a better grade if you mentioned global warming once in your report. You're helpless. Hmm, let's see. Next is. Okay, Tsukushima sound. <laughs> Coco stood up in a rush while breaking into a sweat. I'm impressed. Of course, she did her assignment, and she did a great job on it. There was no comparison to Wataru's diary of an elementary school student. Marvelous! Absolutely wonderful! There is nothing else I need to teach you! Hey, hey. I'm kidding. You get an A, Sikishima san. Impressive. Koko sat down with a bashful smile. So, 
Okay. Next is... How about you, Sakurai-kun? Shit. Damn, he picked me. Double damn, I didn't do the assignment. I better tell him the truth. Uh, I forgot to do the assignment. What did you say? That's no good. I'll just have to let Muppet-kun scold you. Garrison Sensei always wore a finger puppet on his right hand, so yeah, there you see. Whenever there was something he'd rather not say, he let his puppet speak. You bastard! How dare you forget your damn homework! You get a D-minus, bitch! Oh, man. <laughs> it bugged me that I was scolded by a puppet, but it was my fault. I shouldn't have forgotten the assignment. <laughs> yeah. Garrison Sensei. To top it all off, Coco was giggling at me. Shit, she's cute when she giggles. <laughs> okay. Okay, next is Yukimura Sound. Please share your report. Hi. Anzu stood up with an expressionless face, as usual. She held her report in both hands. Her arms were stretched out as if she was accepting a diploma. やがて地球上の酸素はなくなり環境破壊を続け上がれこの愚かな人間どもお前の付けはお前の死をもって償うんだな Oh, Anzu, you are such a great character. <laughs> Needless to say, since that day, everyone in class started putting their efforts into ecological causes. Yeah, so I just like that entire scene. <laughs> Man, it's crowded as ever in here. <laughs> That's so sad. Then why don't you get a part-time job? It doesn't sound convincing coming from you. I'm going to have a bowl of plain udon. What are you going to have? Soup with udon. Got it. We each took a role in this play. Our lunch break is short. We have to be efficient. Let's see. I looked around the cafeteria. It was really crowded. I didn't see any empty seats when I looked. Where can I find two empty seats? Oh, there's a couple. I saw some seats and walked towards them. Then... Oh, you may looked up from the next seat. She talked to me as she tilted her head with her, with her back straight. What a perfect smile. She talked in such a polite manner. It was almost spooky to see Yume act so politely since I was used to seeing her being so lazy at home. She really was a top-notch actress. Mm -hmm. Yume looked at me from the perfect angle. Can we share this table? Hi, please. I tried to sit down. What the? I looked at the face of the girl who was sitting across from Yume. <laughs> Minatsu! The girl clicked her, clicked her tongue. <laughs> Well, not really, but we've met once before. I don't even know her, even know her name. I really love this uh, this theme, by the way. It's a remix of uh, the Amakaze from the original Decapo's team, who was Miharu. Yeah, that was her name, Miharu. Amakaze kept ignoring me. <laughs> she asked me quietly. 
Nothing really. I have no comment regarding that matter. <laughs> that look. She glared at me. Even if she looked at me that way, Mizukoshi Sensei told me not to say anything. Even if Mizukoshi Sensei didn't stop me, I wouldn't know how to explain it anyway. She's actually a robot, and she was sleeping in a cave, but I accidentally activated her. That's absurd. Who would believe a story like that? I thought I'd never see her again. I felt my cheek aching from where she punched me. I glanced at Amakaze, but she acted as if I, did, as if I didn't exist, and continued to eat her lunch. Hmm, this is uncomfortable. Four of us ate in silence. There was the rattling sound of our chopsticks. There was the slurping sound of eating udon noodles. There was no conversation. Wataru tried to talk to Amakaze a few times, but she ignored him completely as well, so he gave up. Yume glared at me once in a while like she wanted to say something. <sighs> this is really something. This is getting really unbearable. I want to hurry up and finish eating so I can go back to the classroom. I scarfed down the rest of my lunch. At the same time, Amakaze put down her chopsticks. She put her hands together. Then she pulled out her bag and took a banana from it. A banana? Oh, you like bananas, huh? Her behavior was so natural I couldn't help commenting. The air around us froze. Her voice sounded angry. Ah, well, I thought you liked bananas. What? Did I say something inappropriate? Yume and Wataru looked away, obviously trying their best not to get involved. How heartless of them. Slam! Wow! Amakaze slammed the table and glared at me. Remember what? Maybe you shouldn't say that... She maybe shouldn't say that she hates humans in a cafeteria full of people. Okay. Bananas and humans. The terrible, terrible duo. She glared at the banana in her right hand. She squeezed out, or as she glared at the banana in her right hand, she squeezed out the word. Suddenly, an electronic sound came from a device on her arm and interrupted her. Amakase clicked her tongue and bit into the banana after she peeled it. She wolfed it down. She ate the banana. Intently. With a foul look on her face the whole time. Uh, what? What is this girl? The people around us went back to what they were doing before as if nothing happened. It was like they didn't want to face the reality. This is beyond my understanding. Hey, Yume, what is Amakaze like? But she's your classmate. The PA rang through with an announcement. I heard Mizukoshi Sensei's voice on the speaker in the ceiling. I looked at Amakaze. Huh? Amakaze turned around and left the cafeteria while completely ignoring me. I watched her leave, dumbfounded. I know. She glared at me. Nothing. Though I had a guess. The fact that both Amaka uh, Amakaze and I were called in by the Mizukoshi-sensei was giving me a bad feeling. 
but I couldn't run. Besides, I promised Bisakoshi sensei that I'd help her. <sighs> I gave a small sigh and followed Amakaze. When I arrived at the nurse's office, I saw a carefree care a carefree what a carefree Mizukoshi sensei and a grimacing Amakaze. She pointed the bed. She pointed the bed. She pointed at the bed, I assume, and I sat on it. Mizukoshi sensei tried to calm Amakaze down and then looked at me. Somehow, Amakaze was standing there proudly, full of confidence. Indeed, Amakaze was looking at me full of hatred, just like a normal human. I couldn't tell. Is she really a robot? Anybody would ask that. No, but no matter how I look at you, you appear human from every direction. I didn't think Mizukoshi Sensei would lie to me, but... Uh-oh. <laughs> Human stole her toys. Amakaze muttered her complaints. Just like humans would do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I nodded. We learned about the his uh, historical incidents caused by robots attempting to integrate into human society. Regulation, oppression, and destruction. They were all good examples of human egos, though. For robots, I'm sure they were extremely annoying and unreasonable demands. I'm sure. If an existence of a robot which looked just like a human came out in the open, various organizations wouldn't stay quiet about it. アマカセがロボットだってバレないように誰かにサポートしてもらいたいのよ。エンドユワンミーとドゥダット?ごめんと。だから皆津は必要ないと言っている。アマカセ Smoke was coming out of her ears. <laughs> Smoke? She tossed a frozen gel pack to Amakaze. Amakaze put the pack on her forehead with a grimace. Uh, uh, yes. The smoke coming out of her ears proved it. She looked at me with an extreme with extreme with extremely reluctance with extreme reluctance. There we go. 
ミナツは別にフォローが必要だとは思ってないからな人間を信用するつもりもないだから桜井貴様は余計なことはするなミナツが言いたいのはそれだけだミナツはスクエアの手を握りながら、ナースの部屋に行くと、ミカズは手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの手を握りながら、ナースの Her voice sounded warm, like a mother concerned about her child. Well, it was my fault for activating her in the first place, so I'll try my best. Mizukoshi sensei smiled. What's this? She handed me a document. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay? She laughed. That isn't what a teacher should, should say. No, it's probably not. She looked into my eyes and smiled. So she said. Let's see. I don't have anywhere else to go, so I guess I'll go home. It was an exhausting day because of Amakaze. On days like this, the best thing to do is to just go home. La la la. La la la. Somebody was singing. There were still some students left in the hallway, and it was noisy. Yet, I could hear it. It was such a pure and clear voice. Where is it coming from? I started to walk while following the voice. When I followed the voice, I ended up in front of the music room. It was a singing voice, so it was natural that I'd end up there. Maybe it's someone staying late to rehearse? The door was open. I peeked inside. It was Shirakawa Nanaka. She was called the Academy's idol because she was cute, stylish, and a great singer. All the male students were in love with her. I'd never really talked to her before, but I knew how, how popular she was. Even so. I've heard about her singing, but she really is a great vocalist. She was singing a cap、uh, cappella with no accompaniment, and yet she was carrying perfect pitch. She was even hitting high notes and making subtle key changes. It was amazing. Ah! Our eyes met. Suddenly, Shirakawa stopped singing. Uh. I didn't know what to do, so I applauded. Wow, that was great. You sounded wonderful. Sorry, I was fascinated by your singing. Eh? Uh, how do you know my name? Shirakawa said, smiling innocently. Wow, what a bright smile. No wonder all the boys are in love with her. <laughs> I, I guess. The faces of my two best friends came to mind. Indeed, we'd wound up causing some kind of trouble at every school event. Not only the teachers, but the student council and the public morals committee kept an eye on us. I guess that's what makes me famous? I'm not exactly proud of it, though. And you are, let's see, Shirakawa san. Nanaka. Eh? Nanaka de i yo. Well, uh. Nanaka. Okay then, Nanaka. Hai, yoku dekimashita. She smiled. What a strange girl. The most popular girl in all of Kazumi Academy was actually really nice. I had an impression of her as being snobby and spoiled. Me? 
I was getting ready to go home. And then I heard a singing voice and wondered who it belonged to. No, you weren't. It was more like your voice carried through all the noise. She tilted her head and looked at me as if she didn't understand what I said. Her big eyes were sparkling with curiosity. How can any man resist this smile? I guess I heard it because it was a pure and beautiful voice. Really? I was touched. <laughs> she walked up to me while thinking about something. Huh? What? She held my hand tightly. I felt a soft sensation in my hand. It was so warm. Her big beautiful eyes looked at me from such a close distance that my heart started to pound. She shook my hand like crazy and smiled from ear to ear. Uh, what is this? Nanaka bowed. Oh, nice to meet you too. I bowed too. Then we looked at each other and laughed. That can't be true. Nanaka nodded several times as she talked to me. She had a well-known rep for being a great singer, so I found that hard to believe. You're absolutely amazing. I bet you have, uh, I bet you have perfect pitch. You didn't even miss a note. I meant it. How she took her breaths, how she started each phrase, everything was like a professional singer. It was amazing that someone the same age as me could have such talent. Not a concerned red and scratched her cheek. Nah, I don't know anything about singing, but I used to play the guitar. Oh, I still do. I taught myself, so it's just for fun. I don't play in a band or anything. Yeah, I guess. I can read music and play a little by ear, too. Nanaka looked at me in amazement and nodded. No, it's really just for fun. The more Nanaka praised me, the more embarrassed I got. She talked boldly. I'd never been asked that question and couldn't answer. Cool? Just because I can play the guitar? So, so clearly Nanaka is the bold, friendly type. I think it's better to be a good singer. Ah, so that means it's even better if you can do both, huh? I think this is the first time I've ever seriously talked to someone about music. Wataru well, and I have talked about it before, but we always ended up goofing around. Altane and Yume may have heard a song I was playing, but we never talked about music. I was happy to be able to talk to music with Nana talk about music with Nanaka, although this was basically the first time we met. <laughs> Ah, that Orange Lunch's new song? That one, uh, the one that's a bit sad, right? I think their new album is coming out soon. Well, I'm planning to buy it, so I'll let you borrow it. Our conversation about music went on. That was when the door to the music room opened. Wataru and Koko came in. They were followed by some other students. I was going to, but then I heard Nanaka singing and followed her voice back here. You two are... Wait, are you friends? Come to think of it, Koko had told me about Shirakawa Nanaka before. Uh, 
うんさんお友達だよココラブナナカハグココラタイリーちょちょっとナナがココは having fun despite putting up a fight It was different to see Koko being friendly with someone other than Anzu and Akane. <laughs> eh? Ah, now I get it. I didn't stand out because of my, mis my misbehavior. I felt relieved. <laughs> What could it be? What are you talking about? Of course. Is that how I am? Hi, hi. On Wataru's cue, the other students started getting their instruments out. Wataru's like, enough of this love fest. Wataru was getting something ready too. What are you starting now? I don't know. Huh? You do? And then Coco is also? Huh. I see. I guess it wasn't that she just liked music. I kind of remember hearing that back when we went to karaoke before. Oh boy. Sorry about that. I just laughed. Oh, are you doing something at the Christmas party? I see. I wonder why. Knowing how much Wataru loved parties, I thought he would be the first one in line to participate in the Light Music Club's event. Hmm. That's why she was singing. Eh? That would mean Nanaka doesn't actually belong to the club, even though she's a great singer. Huh? Eh? Nanaka looked at me with a meaningful smile. She looked at me with her big eyes, as if she was toying it with toying with me. In a way, Nanaka reminded me of a mischievous kitten. Well, while I was wondering how to respond to her, the door opened again. What? Several unfami unfamiliar students looked around the music room. They didn't seem to belong to the Light Music Club. Eh? Nanaka hid behind me as she said that. What is it? I found Shirakawa-san! Nanaka jumped in surprise and dragged me by the arm. What is it? As Nanaka spoke, she pulled my arm and started to run. And then, she ran through the crowd of unfamiliar students who tried to block her way, using me as a shield. What's going on? <laughs> When we got out into the hallway, there were more unfamiliar students trying to block us with their arms wide open. Who are these people? <laughs> ah! I almost tripped because she yanked my arm so hard. I understood she didn't want to get caught by them, but... She was having fun. She was running with an innocent smile as though she was a mischievous child being chased by an adult. Wait a minute, Th that's a dead end! What? Wah! Fan service! Wait a minute! Nanaka, I can see your panties! <laughs> Nanaka thought I couldn't jump out the window, so she reached out to me. She was on the window frame with a smile. She didn't realize I could see her panties. Shit, this is bad. I couldn't concentrate on anything besides them. I'm just a normal guy. Yeah, 
I found Shirakawa-san in the north hallway! I turned around to locate the voice. The student who was following Nanaka came towards us while talking on a walkie-talkie. Nanaka pulled me by the hand without warning. My body flew out the window. Ouch, crunch. Ah! <laughs> My face was touching something soft. What is this? This is the oldest cliché in the book, that's what it is. I smelled something very sweet, too. Eh? I heard Nanaka's voice above my head. I looked up in a hurry. Eh, I was on top of Nanaka. My face was buried in Nanaka's chest? Sorry, I really am. I got up in a hurry. Eh, I, uh... I tried to come up with an excuse, but I couldn't think of anything. Ah, I still remember the sensation of her chest on my face, and it makes me want to smile. <laughs> I shook my hands uh, to shake off my sweat. <laughs> he is a funny fellow. Maybe in the wrong way sometimes, but, you know. Eh? Eh? Nanaka eyed me with a slightly troubled smile, as if enjoying my reaction. She didn't seem to be angry about my face touching her chest. Ah, but what am I supposed to do? I didn't know why, but I couldn't get myself in gear. I found Shirakawa-san in a bush by the north building! Ah, there's another pursuer. <laughs> Nanaka said gleefully, and then grabbed my hand again. <laughs> eh, wah! He does that a lot. Again, Nanaka ran while dragging me by the hand. Nanaka ran lightly like a rabbit, but I, on the other hand, stumbled and almost fell on my face. But we were both smiling. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Nanaka's hand was warm as I, uh, I held it in mine. Next scene. <laughs> Quite a transition. Huh? Ah, oh, nothing. I didn't do anything you should be concerned about. The two of them cast suspicious gazes on me. I really mean it. Mizukoshi sensei asked me to do something. Amakase well, that's because... I couldn't tell them. I was the one responsible for making sure that nobody found out about it. Their silent pressure was terrifying. I had to think really hard. I had to come up with an idea to get out of this situation. Well, she is... Choice! Man, it's been a long time since we had a choice. Um, we're gonna save here, but, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna choose my sister separated at birth, just because, frankly, it's my favorite choice. <laughs> so, yeah. Because it's dumb. Because, you know, they're both your quote-unquote sisters, so... Yeah. <laughs> we were separated at birth, and my little sister finally found me and wanted me to take care of her. That's not working! <laughs> Thanks for the completely unsurprised monotone. It surprised me too. <laughs> I like that line. I didn't do that. Yeah, why wouldn't they trust me? Though, technically, what happened with Nanaka earlier today probably was sexual harassment, so let's not get into that. After a while... As we talked, we heard Sakura-san's voice from the entryway. She sat down and breathed a deep breath. Altune got up immediately. 
ゲホゲホそれは言わない約束だよお父さん Alternate prepared dinner while playing along with Sakura's act Domestic girls are so attractive なんですか<笑> Nothing どうせ私は家事全般できませんよーだ She looked away while pouting She knew what I was thinking ゆめちゃんにはゆめちゃんのいいところがたくさんあるから大丈夫だよ Sakura-san said with a smile はいどうぞ Alternate came back from the kitchen and reheated the with uh, rather with reheated food in her hands ありがとうえさっきは何の話してたのすごく楽しそうだったけど you know, sexual harassment. クリスマスパーティーのことです弟くんのクラスではお化け屋敷をやるんだそうですよへえ面白そうだねいやでも兄さんに杉並さんそれに板橋さんでしょ私だったら絶対に入りたくないな要注意人物オールスターだもんね気をつけないと I'm telling you I won't be participating I was planning to look around that day. Not really, but I may go with people from Nanaka's class and Coco. Or something like that. You may sound e d dissatisfied. その貴重な時間を無駄な仕事で潰させないでよ弟くん Don't say that to me Tell Suginami I had a feeling Suginami was going to ruin her precious free time Free time 言って聞くような子なら苦労しないよ Ultine looked so disturbed by his actions that I felt sorry for her My condolences I prayed Let's see I laid face down on my bed and looked at the documents I'd pulled from my bag. Type HMA06 Minatsu is what was written on the front cover. Type HMA06, huh? In my mind, Amakaze was no different from a human. The disgruntled face, the glaring eyes, the screaming voice. Although it was a fact that she was a robot, it still didn't seem real. The impression I had of,、uh, of a robot was something mechanic that mechanically fulfilled its tasks with dull eyes or was on display in a showcase. I flipped through the, paper,、uh, the pages. I saw Amakaze's specification and key points. Her height was 151 centimeters and her weight was 36 kilograms. Hmm, she's light for a robot. Well, she isn't made of metal after all. Her three sizes were 72, 50, 75. I felt guilty reading this. Her power source was a combination of solar power and a wind up coil spring. Wind up coil spring? Seriously, a wind up spring? She's not some ancient tin toy. I would think there's a more,、uh, yeah, I would think there's more efficient sources of power. Well, I'm sure that's only a backup for dire emergencies. And banana mean. What? What's banana mean? You can probably figure it out from the name, but you know. Let's see, it's a necessary compound required to generate the energy for AI's proper functionality. It's ingested via bananas. I guess it's like how people need carbs. When banana mean supplies are low, the AI's control system becomes overloaded, which may result in overheating. Therefore, it is necessary to consume a banana once every eight hours. That's why she ate a banana during lunch. Minatsuana! この世界で嫌いなものが2つだけある1つはもちろん貴様たち人間そしてもう1つがバナナだ In order to live, she has to eat the things she hates Worse, her body was built by the human she hates I was certain that she was smart enough to appreciate the irony of the situation Humans were the ones who made her the way she was, and when they realized she was dangerous, they wanted to destroy her. How selfish. I don't blame her for hating humans. I put the papers off to the side and turned the light off. I laid on my back and closed my eyes. I thought to myself that I should do what I could. It was my responsibility as the one who woke her up. Well, she sure wasn't willing to be friendly, though. I don't think we can have an amicable relationship. 
However, I guess I'll have to make an effort. As I thought stuff like that, I fell asleep. <sighs> Humans are creatures that dream. Different from others. They want to be special. They want to be adored by others. Just like the heroes in comics and games. Achieving great things with unique powers. Of course, no one believes deep down that it could ever happen. Everyone knows that there's no magic in this world. But every night before I sleep, I close my eyes and imagine myself. Flying free up in the sky. Moving too fast for the eye to see. Firing lasers from the palms of my hands. Rushing to the rescue of my damsel in distress. And of course, our happy ending. A dream like that. Well, since it was a dream, anything was allowed. Even all kinds of unreasonable developments. Even if half the world was destroyed, it would be back to normal the next day. After all, it's only a dream. The heroines were all girls from po uh, famous pop idol groups. Furthermore, they were all there just for me. That kind of thing's allowed, too. It never caused anyone any problems, anyways. <sighs> to be honest, it was troublesome for me. My power. I had the power to be shown other people's dreams. It was a strange ability I had, but I couldn't think of it as anything special. Actually, I didn't even want to be special like that. If anybody wanted to take this power away from me, I'd be happy to give it to them. Dreams are incoherent to begin with, especially when they're someone else's dreams. That makes them even harder to digest. So, how long is this going to last? The hero rescued the heroine and reached the climax in this adventurous love romance with no explanation. However, it doesn't seem like it'll end anytime soon. So of course he's watching someone else's dream right now. There was a businessman being mobbed by a group of idol singer heroines, and nobody knew exactly how many members uh, were in the group because of the constant member changes. What a happy face. Well, it's only a dream. With the exception of certain areas, we will continue to uh, continue our live dream bot broadcast. The announcement trailed by through my drain. My my drain. <laughs> my drain. My brain. Well, he's asleep. His brain is empty. You could call it a drain, right? Kind of, sort of, maybe? No? Okay. I guess someone's dreaming overtime, since I'm seeing it in late-night broadcast mode. The businessman was ready to get to it. That's what you wanted all this time, huh? Then the adventure story was begin uh, at the beginning was unnecessary. Gah. I let out a large yawn. This was the downside to being shown someone else's dreams. Yeah, having to watch someone else get busy would kind of be kind of awkward, probably. Not getting enough sleep for the next day. This isn't worth it. It seemed to go on forever. Awkward. Alrighty. Mm, I think I'm going to stop the stream and uh, and start it right back up once again. I'll probably go through. Uh, you know, another day or so, depending on how long it is, and uh, and cut the stream off. But yeah, we're gonna continue for a little longer. But to make things easier for YouTube cutting, I'm going to end it here. So I'll be back in like a minute. So.